Parao restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Parao's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as your sep had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember your sep, but forgot him. Bereshith, Genesis chapter 41 and it was at the end of two full years that Parao dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven cows, well favoured and fat fleshed, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river ill-favoured and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other cows upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favoured and lean-fleshed cows did eat up the seven well-favoured and fat cows. So Parao awoke, and he slept and dreamed a second time, and behold, Seven ears of grain came up upon one stalk, fat and good. And behold, seven ears, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven fat and full ears. And Parao awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it was in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Mithraim and all the wise men thereof, and Parao told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them to Parao. Then spoke the chief butler to Parao, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Parao was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the house of the captain of the guard, me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was with us there a young man, a Ebri, a servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, did he interpret. And it was, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored to my office, and him he hanged. Then Parao sent and called Yosef, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself, and changed his garments, and came in to Parao. And Parao said to Yosef, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that when thou hearest a dream, Thou canst interpret it. And Yosef answered Parao, saying, It is not in me. God will give Parao an answer of peace. And Parao spoke to Yosef, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the brink of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven cows, fat-fleshed and well-favoured, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ill-favoured and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Mithraim for badness. And the lean and ill-favoured cows did eat up the first seven fat cows, and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favoured as at the beginning. 
So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up upon one stalk, full and good, and behold, seven ears withered, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them, and the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears, and I told it to the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Yosef said to Paro, The dream of Paro is one. What the God is about to do, he hath declared to Paro. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven lean and ill-favoured cows that came up after them are seven years, and also the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind, they shall be seven years of famine. That is the thing which I spoke to Parao, what the God is about to do, he hath showed to Parao. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Mithraim, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Mithraim, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine which followeth, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled to Parao, it is because the thing is established by the God, and the God is hastening to effectuate it. Now therefore, let Parao look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Mithraim. Let Parao do this, and let him appoint overseers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Mithraim in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of these good years that come, and lay up grain under the hand of Parao for food in the cities, and let them keep it. And the food shall be for a store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Mithraim, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Parao, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Parao said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Parao said to Yosef, Forasmuch as God hath showed thee all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Parao said to Yosef, See, I have set thee over all the land of Mithraim. And Parao took off his signet ring from his hand, and put it upon Yosef's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck, and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee! And he set him over all the land of Mithraim. And Parao said to Yosef, I am Parao, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or his foot in all the land of Mithraim. And Parao called Yosef's name 
Asnat Paneh, and he gave him for a woman Asnat, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of Horn. And Yosef went out over the land of Mithraim, and Yosef was thirty years old when he stood before Parao, king of Mithraim. And Yosef went out from the presence of Parao and went throughout all the land of Mithraim. And in the seven years of the plenty. The earth effectuated four fistfuls, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Mithraim, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about each city, laid he up in the same. And Yosef laid up grain as the sand of the sea, very much, until he left off numbering. For it was without number, and to Yosef were born two sons before the year of famine came, whom Hasanet, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of Horn, bare to him, and Yosef called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for said he, God hath made me forget all my toil. And all my father's house, and the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of the plenty were finished, which plenty was in the land of Mithraim. And the seven years of the famine began to come. According as Yosef had said, and there was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Mithraim there was bread. And when all the land of Mithraim was famished, the people cried to Parao for bread, and Parao said to all the Mithraim, "Go to Yosef; what he saith to you, do." And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Yosef opened all the storehouses and sold to the Mithraim. And the famine became mighty in the land of Mithraim, and all countries came into Mithraim to Yosef to buy grain, because the famine had become mighty in all the earth. Now Yaqob saw. That there was grain in Mithraim, and Yaqob said to his sons, "Why do ye look one upon another?" And he said, "Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Mithraim. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die."